Hey guys, it's Andy Tran here with another live chat with John from the Wingman 115 channel and Ken from Prepare One. They are live at SHOT Show right now in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, unfortunately I cannot be there this year. I'm going to be going to school and I can't uh, take any time off from that. So if you guys want to say a little bit about yourself and how to get in contact with you guys. Yeah, so hey guys, how are you from Vegas? Uh, my name's Ken from Prepare One. Uh, first time on the live show, so thanks for for allowing me to sit in. Um, so I own a emergency preparedness first aid company based in Southern California. And I'm John from the Wingman 115 channel. A lot of you have seen us both broadcasting live with Andy on a lot of shows. I want to personally thank Ken for. Uh, having me come out with him, the SHOT Show. This is quite the experience, and I'm glad to be here tonight to uh, do this live show. Awesome. And I would like to thank you as well, because it wouldn't be uh, possible without uh, you know the support and help of you. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Ken also was a big supporter and sponsor on the Amazon trip. So he hooked me up with a little bit of airfare and also with the, uh, the first aid kit, which we did end up using more than I would like, but it was very nice to have it. So awesome! Yeah. But yeah. you live to tell about it. I live to tell about it. Actually, it, it's more used on other people uh, than me, fortunately, because uh, there's a lot of like things that they go wrong in the jungle. Seems like so. Very happy that I have all my fingers and everything. So it is your first time at Shot Show, correct? Yes. Yeah. What would be? Uh, the thing that surprised you the most about the SHOT Show experience? I would say us getting lost a couple times in the parking lot at the convention center. And this is before you even stepped foot on the floor? Before we even stepped in on the sales floor, we were lost. So that our, na our nav skills in the city need a little more work. Out in the woods, good to go. Las Vegas, well... We'll work on it. By Thursday, we'll be better. We promise. So uh, how would you uh, describe SHOT Show in one paragraph for people that have never been? Yeah, it's my first time. Uh, been wanting to come to SHOT Show for probably 15 years. Uh, I think the biggest surprise I had so far was just the size. Uh, unbelievable. So not only the convention center, but there's probably four or five huge ballrooms, and you walk into it, and it's just row after row after row of vendors from everything from firearms, accessories, archery, I mean, you name it, knives. And so, I mean, we spent eight hours today, and I think we covered maybe 40% if that of the show. So it's just the massive size and the vendors, and... Um, yeah, I don't know in size comparison to other shows if it's bigger or smaller, but I guess when you look at the state of the industry, um, it doesn't look like it's hurting to me because, I mean, it's just packed wall to wall, and the crowds were huge. So that, that was the biggest surprise that probably I had. Yeah, it, for me, it was, it was like Disneyland on steroids for big boys and girls. Uh, a lot of great stuff out there, everything imaginable. It's almost information overload for uh, an individual. Unless you come with like a specific plan of certain things that you want to see, you can easily get sidetracked with a lot of the stuff that's out there. All the AR variant stuff, the flashlights, the knives, the police, the tactical things, duck hunting stuff. I mean, it's just insane the amount of stuff that's out there. And like it, it proves that there's definitely a marketplace for a lot of this stuff, and the people, the vendors are there buying. Yeah. So I imagine with the size and the scope of the show, you probably found a couple of companies that you've never heard about before. Uh, what one of those companies that are new to you were you most surprised about? Okay. Yeah, there's one particular. Uh, Company. So, you know, my primary interest is the medical, about 80% medical, about 20% preparedness, survival type stuff. But um, so I was hitting all the medical booths. I, I mapped them out before I had a time. 
one company called Tribal, Tribal Company, Tribal CO. So they do a lot of tactical medical stuff for the government. Um, and they're they coming out with some some really high-end products as far as the tactical medical line. But they're also coming out, in addition, they're a DOD contractor, but they're coming out with a series of medical products for schools, um, for high-risk shooting, active shooters. Um, and so they're kits that, you know, they're built out with like 15, 20 cat tourniquets and, and blood stoppers and stuff. And they're doing training for schools with teachers and things like that for high-risk active shooters. So that's a company that, um, that great products, but they're shifting their business model to kind of target some of these private schools and stuff in light of the, the things that are going on. So I was really impressed with them. Um, Leatherman um, is coming out this year with two new colors for the Raptor. So if you're not familiar with the Raptor, yeah. I'm so, so excited for those. <laughs> it's basically the EMT shears on steroids. Um, and they came out with this one last year or the year before. And you just can't get them. They're sold out everywhere. Um, I equipped Andy with one for his Amazon trip for his kit that was built out. Um, but it's got everything from oxygen wrench, ring cutter, glass breaker. Uh, they fold down. There's a Kydex sheath. But um, one thing that I didn't know, they're coming out with a rescue orange variant of this and one in coyote tan as well. Uh, and so I threw some pictures up there on my Instagram if you want to take a look at that. But so I'm excited for that. Um, and Leatherman is starting to get caught, up, caught back up on their manufacturing. So... Um, where last year you just couldn't find them, but I think they're starting to catch back up. So I was uh, surprised and happy to, to see those. Awesome. And that's actually something I'm carrying every day now because uh, I'm doing my EMT training over here at the college. So yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. How about you, John? Uh, for me, it's a small upstart company, and they work with Topps Knives. They're called Battle Blades. And... In a couple days, I'll be showcasing a video of the gentleman that introduced like this belt buckle EDC type one tool option knife that kind of has um, things for a hex wrench. I think there was a bottle opener on it. You know, I'm going to have to redo the video because there was so much information from shot hitting us at one time. But uh, Ken and I were talking about going back to his booth tomorrow and both purchasing one and coming home with it. We were that impressed with it. Uh, he designs them, Tops makes them, so you know the heat treat's going to be spot on and that it's going to be built tough. Um, I was really impressed with Sly Steel's uh, Kuma Survival Takri. I mean, that thing was on point, and I, if folks are subscribers to the uh, Wingman Facebook page, you saw a couple days ago that I did a prototype photo from Sly Steel. I just shared it on my page. And today when I got to see the actual physical knife in hand, it, it was pretty awesome. And I got to interview um, the designer, Johnny Sai. Very nice guy. Uh, we went through his lineup. There's a lot of cool stuff at Tops. So you'll have to watch my upcoming videos for some sneak peeks of what's coming up. And uh, there, 2015 is going to be a good year for Tops. They got some good stuff, Sly Steel. Uh, I can't talk about a few prototype things that they got coming up, but they hit me with some info of things coming down the pipe. And if you love outdoors, they, they have some knives that you're going to love. They are going to be nice. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. And I guess the other side of that is uh, what larger companies were you most impressed about, whether that be from their booth setup point of view or their new product point of view? Okay. Yeah, I would say um, all the big players, Smith & Wesson, Colt, um, Nikon, the, the size of their booth was just unbelievable. Some of these booths were three stories tall and easy one or 200 feet long. So, yeah. I mean... Yeah, all the big players in the industry, and they go all out. It did seem like they cut corners. Um, so their booths were impressive. Um, everything from private meeting rooms, things like that. There's a couple of night vision uh, companies that had full setups that were completely blacked out that you could try their night vision gear 
uh, and a completely black room. So um, that was impressive as well. So you can see some of these large companies like Smith and Nikon, um, yeah, they're, they're spending money. And, uh, you know, it, it appears by looking at it, the industry is healthy by the amount of money they're, they're spending. Some of the other ones, you know, on the firearm side, the Daniel Defense uh, uh, setup was pretty impressive, and they've got some, you know, high-speed, high-end rifles and stuff, so um, way out of my price range, but they got some good stuff. Um, we stopped by the VanQuest um, booth as well, and so we, we spent some time with James and Alex. We're going to do some video shoots tomorrow, um, but they got a couple new products coming out. Uh, specifically, so if you're familiar with the Trident backpack, which is, um, I think, 20, 20 liters, yeah. and then the Ibex, which is 30, they had two new backpacks in between, between 24 and 28 liters that were really impressive. So if you like the Trident version, um, they've got kind of a Trident Plus. Uh, I don't remember the name, and I think the release date's like April or May. Uh, but it's two other sizes kind of between the Trident and the, and the Ibex. If you like the Ibex format, there's one a little bit smaller that's about 25 liters, I think, but which is the same format that unzips and kind of lays out. So it was good to see that. They've got a Covert Series uh, line of gear as well that they're coming out with, um, not the tactical Coyote Tan or OD Green, so they're light blues and dark blues, things like that. So they had those on display as well. Um, and then if you're familiar, on the medical side is which the world that I live in. So they've got the 4x6 and the 5x8 fat packs, and they're coming up with a prototype, um, which is the next size up. So it's kind of in between a rapid response size case and a 5x8. So it's a, for building a more comprehensive first aid kit. Um, kind of the same design as the 5x8 fat pack, so it kind of opens up, but then it has another layer that kind of opens up to the side. So that's in prototype now. They had it at the show. Um, maybe I'll grab some pictures of that tomorrow, and I'll, I'll put them up on uh, Facebook. Um, so that's good stuff. Um, what I like about VanQuest is they're kind of li they listen to the customers and their dealers as far as what the customers want, uh, and they're real responsive and if you ask them, hey, I'm, I'm having customers that like this style or they want to switch something up, they've been real responsive about really being in tune on what, what's working well, what's not, and what the customers are, are asking for. Yeah, you're right about that because James, uh, who works for VanQuest, I've been wearing the IVIX 30 today uh, round shot show. When I was in the booth, he would ask what my thoughts were about long-term use of the item. And we went over a few things, and they're going to be doing, in, in future variants of that, they're going to improve upon what is already a great pack. So they're, they're on the tip of the spear on innovation. Uh, for me, one of the boosts that I was really impressed with, you guys know that I am an air gun freaking freak, and Pyramid Air had a booth that just had a ton of eye candy, um, Pellet guns are not your kids' air rifles anymore. This year, uh, Crossman, who owns the Benjamin line, is coming out with a uh, uh, Magpul AR variant in 22 caliber. Then eventually they're going to come out in 30 and 35 caliber air guns that are going to be just dumping a ton of foot pounds coming out the barrel. So it's going to be a fun year for air guns. So, it's the year of big boy air guns. So if Onyx has stepped up their game, Pat Stan has stepped up their game, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Maybe tomorrow if I happen across any of those booths, I try to get someone today to talk about the, uh, the AR Magpul one, but their marketing director was camera shy. So uh, I didn't have a chance to, uh, to show that to you folks. So hopefully tomorrow maybe I'll stumble across somebody. Uh, if you're in the air gun world and, and you like Jim Shockey, I bumped into him. Really nice guy. I'm only 5'6", so I felt like I was uh, Papa Smurf because he's got to be at least 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Just huge guy. Really nice guy. But uh, I was really impressed with just the showmanship. It's Las Vegas and the showmanships of the booths. They're just awesome. All awesome. Sweet. So what? Uh, what's your... 
what products, I guess, kind of piqued your interest the most? Yeah, for me, you know, back to the tactical first aid stuff, because uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm, you know, that's the world that I live in. Um, so Adventure Medical Kit, you know, they're they're a a big player in the medical industry, um, so they went all out. Um, so you'll find them at REI and Sports Chalet and, and you know uh, Bass Pro, uh, but they're coming out with a new line of kits, and you went black. Oh yeah, there, there you go. go. So they're coming out um, with a new line of, of sporting dog uh, first aid kits. So they're purpose-built kits based around uh, dogs and hunting dogs and things like that. So that's April, May release date. I think there's four different variants from small size to large size. So that, that was um, interesting to see. Um, there's a couple other first aid companies that are focusing on hunting and sporting dogs, so they've got some good products coming out, purpose-built kits around around your pets and canines. So that's kind of the stuff that kind of gets me excited, but that's the that's the world that I, I live in. The other stuff, you know, the guns and knives, I leave that to, to you guys. Um, everybody knows I do a lot of flashlight reviews, and I just love all that geek stuff. There's a company called Army Tech, that had some really cool flashlights that were like 90 degrees and they were really small and they were just great that you could put on say a backpack shoulder harness and they even had adapters so you could wear it as like a headlamp which was kinda cool and it just put off a ton of light uh, with those Cree XM uh, L2 lights it's just insane the amount of lumens that these little lights put out but there was just so many cool flashlights, and it was just so much information overload to uh, to take in at any one time. But uh, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out 2015. Yeah. You know, there's something for everyone. That's that's the thing at these shows. There's just something for everyone. What was the flashlight company that Andy reviewed that we saw at the Leatherman booth? Um. LED something? Yeah, uh, lead sensor. Lead, uh, lead lenser. Lead, lead lenser, lenser yeah. 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 They're they're at the same booth as a Leatherman, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't know they were, I guess they're owned by Leatherman. I was pretty impressed by their flashlight line, some good stuff. And they had one that was, I don't know how many lumens, but it was about this tall. It was crazy. Um, but some good stuff. Seemed like high quality. Um, like definitely up above like Nikkor, or, you know that level. But um, I was surprised. I guess I don't know the relationship between Leatherman and them, but the the parent company or not, but their stuff seemed like pretty pretty high quality. There's another flashlight company that the charger instead of the mini USB that a lot of flashlights have, like the Nikkor, where you got to unscrew the part of it and you and you plug in the mini USB, it's magnetic. So there's a magnetic disc just on the outside of the flashlight. You take your USB and it's got a magnetic um, connector, and you just put it up against the flashlight, and it and it sticks, and that's how it charges, I guess, through inductive charging. So that was that was a pretty neat feature I'd seen before. And it had one of the lights had like uh, say you need roadside assistance. It was the same company that it had the uh, red and white. Yeah, like side flashing LEDs too. Yeah, the other the other feature it had is is actually on the push button. It was a, it was a white gray color, and about every ten seconds there's a setting that it just kind of flashes a light. So if mm -hmm. you were to drop the flashlight at night, um, the button itself would put out a, a very faint flash that you'd be able to find it if it rolled away somewhere. I, that was a neat feature I'd seen before either. Yeah, there's everybody's stepping up their game, especially with the uh, Cree LED technology. It's just insane the amount of light that these lights put out. They're getting smaller and brighter every year. Oh, big time! Yeah. Um, so, a question <laughs> from uh, I got a question from one of the uh, viewers here. Lifted zero four two two. Uh, wants to know if you checked out any of the Buck Knives, and if you did, uh, what are your thoughts? Did we go by Buck? We went by the Buck booth. I'll just leave it at that. 
<laughs> I mean, uh, there wasn't anything I was going like, yay, this is some cool, some new cool stuff. I mean, I don't know. I It was like cold oatmeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, sometimes yeah. they hit it out of the park, and sometimes they kind of like lay low and, and focus on more like quality control and, and I main think path. this was a lay low year. It's, I mean, I... I don't know. It's probably because we see so much stuff and we get to play with so much stuff. But there wasn't anything I was like, "Wow, I need to, I need to get this to review, or I need to, I really need this." I wasn't like, "Wow, I, I yeah, want their it, whole, their whole table." Yeah, it seems like they, their booth wasn't very impressive. So, and maybe that's not where they choose to spend their money. Uh, but nothing that kind of jumped out. Um, again, I, I don't know, I don't know my knives, but. I was impressed with the Gerber booth. Yeah. Um, Gerber went all out, and the size of their booth was unbelievable. Um, and the way they had it set up and the way they display their products, a lot of stuff out there. Um, several new Gerber multi-tools that I think are coming out yeah. um, with. Don't, I don't have any idea what the models are, but pretty impressive. But just the size of the Gerber booth and the money they put into it, um, that was... That it made you walk by and stop and see what you know what's going on there. Did you um, meet up with Andrew Gritzba down there? He's like the marketing guy. Last I checked. At Gerber. Yeah. No, there was a lot. There was a lot of people there, and then they were going to have a, a gentleman come and talk to me, but he was busy with somebody else, and we had we had to cut and run and move on at that point. But uh, we stopped by the uh, trade booth. They had a really nice setup. Everything was organized. I got to meet what their lead designer for their knives and uh, pick his brain and kind of ask some questions of what, how he designs and why he designs certain things. And it was really cool. And he he was listening too on some of our input. And uh, he reads a lot of comments from the videos that we put out. So if you guys want your voices heard. You need to engage in these videos, folks, because companies are listening to social media and they're revamping their lineup, they're redesigning their lineup, all because of that. And part of that was the SCHF 36, 37, and 38, their, quote, Bushcraft series knives are because of you folks out there that wanted that and they heard that, so they went and designed that for you folks. So they... they they have a few more things coming down the pipe. I got to see some prototypes I can't talk about. They showed me some design photos. You're really going to like it. There's there's some affordable options coming out that are going to be really cool uh, later on this year, early next year. It's it's nice. Awesome. And Lieutenant Survival wants to know if we checked out the blade light from SOG. Uh, uh, we didn't make it by saw, but that's the knife that's got the little LED light on the end. Yep. Yeah, I think saw. We got to make make sure we stop by there. And you know, I was thinking. So if anybody, I can't see the comments, but if anybody has uh, specific booths or knives that they want us to hit tomorrow, um, you know, throw them in the comments. And then if it's knife, knife or air gun related. Um, John could comment, and if it's emergency preparedness, first aid related, I can find it and I'll put it up on my page. So I didn't even throw that out. So if anybody has yeah. any specifics, if you got a question that you'd like us to ask somebody in a, in one of the booths, and if we happen, you got to remember, like we said, there's like four or five halls and just hundreds of vendors in each hall. But if we're close by. I'll stop in and ask a question and see if I can get somebody on camera to uh, be able to help us out. So uh, it's a good way to have your voice heard and get right straight to the horse's mouth on that one. Speaking of four halls and you pretty much walking everywhere, uh, Take Back the Power wants to know how much you walked today in miles. I think we talked a little bit before the, uh, the live show about that. I can tell you how many steps I took. I took 11,260 steps today, so I don't know how that translates in miles, but it, it was a lot. I mean, it was seven straight hours before we actually sat down, uh, so it's miles, that's for sure. And we got 
not even half the show today. Yeah, it it was, and I mean we were, it wasn't like just standing around. We it was pretty much almost constant movement the whole time. Yeah. You know, except for when we talked maybe to a vendor, maybe ten minutes, and then move move on again. But it's it's so hard to describe how far this is. We when we started out in one hall, we started doing the centipede where we were going back and forth, back and forth, and I think we only covered maybe two thirds of the hall before we had to go upstairs uh, to meet somebody at a booth. So it it's just crazy town how big this is. The yeah, Shot Show's done a good job, so they've got a mobile app. So you can download the mobile app, you could highlight all the booths you want to go to. Uh, and it pulls up on the actual map on your phone or your computer if you want, and it'll actually tell you where you're at um, next to one booth. And so they've done a good job of trying to help people navigate, but it, it's it's still not easy. I mean, it's it's huge. I don't even know we're here till Thursday half day, and if we we'd be able to cover the entire show, every building with a full two and a half days. I'm not even sure we'll be able to do it. It's that big. Yeah, that would be hard. One cool thing uh, this year, I got to bump into a lot of YouTubers that uh, I sub I'm fans of their channel. I subscribe, they, and they've been subscribers of mine, folks, uh, like Fate of Destiny. She's uh, a big gun geek, knife geek, fitness person. I bumped into her and her brother, who was her cameraman uh, on the floor. Uh, I bumped into Prepper Kip, really nice guy. I bumped into Mike Travis. Uh, we were out last night uh, having a few adult beverages, and he told me to tell you, Andy, that he said hi. Uh, I bumped into Chris Tanner at the Schrade booth, and uh, maybe tomorrow, a little insider information, I think he has a prototype of Jessica X. So I'm going to try to corner him. I have to grab him by the ear and four-point him in hog time and see if I can't get him to talk about Jessica X uh, for you folks. So uh, that's a little bit of what's going on tomorrow, plus the VanQuest booth that we're going to hang in for a little bit to go over some of their new uh, uh, product line. And all those videos, what I'll, as soon as I get home from shot, I'm going to try to pump those videos out one after another so you guys can see them while they're still fresh. Awesome. Um, that being said, uh, going off your last thing, what, what do you try and plan on doing? Because... I mean, obviously, you can't see everything, um, but are there companies that you have in mind that you absolutely need to see before you leave? Uh, there's a couple other tactical medical companies that I've got on my list um, to see. A couple other companies that manufacture uh, Cordura gear that I'm looking at getting custom built medical type packs. So they're on my list. Uh, we haven't been by the Condor booth. No. So that's all. Uh, We're trying to bump into Joe well. Flowers. Yeah. He'll be there. Yeah, we want, we want, I want a crazy interview with Joe. I want to top uh, Tanner's interview last year. Yeah, skip, skip the morning coffee, go hang out with Joe for about five minutes. He'll be right as rain. Yeah. Uh, there's one hall that's completely dedicated to law enforcement, first responders. We haven't hit that hall, um, so that's on tap tomorrow as well. Um, what else? I'm kind of open. I mean, uh, I think Hawk's going to be at, what? what is it, Green Mountain? Green or? River Supply. I think yeah, Michael Green Hawk River Supply. So Hawk's going to be there. Uh, if any of you guys are Gold Rush fans, I met Dave Turin last night. He's going to be at the Garrett booth. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with uh, the Hoffmans from that show that's on Discovery Channel. Really cool guy. We talked for a couple minutes. Awesome individual. Uh, if you guys watch that show, Ultimate Survival Alaska, uh, the two guys from the military team are going to be there uh, at one of the booths tomorrow. Uh, what's the name of that one... Uh, uh, SUV vehicle that you like that's all-wheel drive and floats. Uh, so Argo. Argo, yeah. They're going to be at like an Argo booth tomorrow, so that's kind of cool. So they're, I'm kind of open-ended, and I'm kind of just seeing seeing where 
the wind blows on this shot show since it's my I'm a noob and it's my first one. So I'm just not trying to have like this super set schedule where I've only got 10 minutes here, then we got to go to the next one, go to the next one. I'm open ended, so if there's time, 15, 20 minutes to talk to somebody, I have that time to uh, be able to do it and not feel rushed or hurried. So it's been a lot of fun for me so far. You know, it's been really great. Other than us doing a death march around the uh, convention center, that place just from the parking lot to the convention center is a death march. Sweet. When we can find the car. <laughs> well, what you need to do is just get, you know, some breadcrumbs or something like that or spray paint and just spray paint some dots all the way, you know, to the door. Do the Hansel and Gretel maneuver. Exactly. I don't know if you'll be welcome back next year if you do that, but it's worth a shot. Dave, uh, Dave Canterbury is, is in the show somewhere. I guess he's been sighted. And I don't know if he's at a particular booth or not, but he's around, walking around. Yeah, I'll have to check him out on Facebook and see where he's going to be hanging out. I'd, I'd love to be able to talk to him for you folks. Today. Yeah. Especially about his new book. Since I did a review on his book, I'd love to ask him a few questions and uh, what he's got going on. So that, that would be a fun one. Yeah, I want to check out that book because the way you were talking about it, it seems like it might be one of those you know, books that are kind of like household bushcraft books, you know, later on down the road in like 50 years. Because um, there's certainly some of them that we still read from like the 40s and 50s that are still very relevant today. And everybody at SHOT Show asked me where Andy Tran is. They say he's my YouTube little brother. And they, need, and they were questioning where Mr. Tran was at SHOT Show. So Andy is missed at this shot. We appreciate you having us on a live show, though, that we could report from. Uh, I know that we had a blast last year doing it. And, I was glad we were able to hook up again this year. Yeah, last year was pretty crazy. Last year I had the opportunity to bring uh, my friend from film school, so he was my second camera. So we were like editing all night and doing a live show and then doing the shot show itself, so it was a marathon. I'm surprised we didn't you know, get sick or anything like that afterwards. Yeah, I don't know how you did it because we're, we're pretty beat. So do you guys plan on uh, buying anything at the show and taking home? Because you guys are driving, right? So you can pretty much take whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's this uh, particular knife at Tops that I've been trying to get that's been out of stock forever. You're, uh, you may have heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to cruise by the uh, Battle Blades again. And uh, I think we're going to buy those uh, belt buckle knives that are pretty cool. Yeah, I was surprised a lot of the vendors, a lot of their stuff, I mean, obviously not firearm stuff, but a lot of the other stuff that's on display, uh, even though it's a, it's a deal. You're right. It's a live show, <laughs> folks. I'm sorry. It's all that shot show smoke going through me. John's having a seizure, man. <laughs> My eyes start to twitch. But even though it's a live show, a lot of stuff is for sale. So like at the Topps booth, <clears throat> every knife they had on there, you could walk up and pay retail if you want it, so it's it's pretty nice. Um, it's a it's a show primarily for dealers and distributors, so they you know they're wanting to write orders to dealers, but they'll sell you most products there retail. That's pretty cool. Uh, one of the things that I wish I was there to go see is like the whole law enforcement section, because there's yeah. definitely some things that you know are uh, not general issue that I think would be beneficial for like comfort or safety, like additional safety for the officer. Um, like there, there's a really cool bulletproof vest that, you know, can diffuse like a taser attack or whatever if, it, if your taser gets used on yourself. And it's been out for a while, but I never thought about looking at those until like just recently. So yeah. They had a really cool active shooter simulator that, uh, we were watching, where like somebody's in a stairwell, you know, and sitting down, and you know, it was kind of cool to see how somebody would react in certain situations like that. So that that was a cool thing that wasn't in the law enforcement uh, area, but uh, there was a lot of folks from like gun clubs that were looking at that mm -hmm. to have at their gun club. One of the things that I was really impressed about last year when I went was the stress vest. And if you go 
into, I think, the law enforcement section. You'll find them there. Um, but it's like a really good alternative to using um, paintball or airsoft for, um, you know, live action training. And the cool thing about it is you can shoot through a window like you would be able to shoot with a regular gun and, uh, and be able to hit a target. And instead of getting hit by a little BB, it, like, it activates a, a taser basically on your stomach and then it shocks you into submission. So it gives you a really good uh, reason not to get hit, so it's a lot more realistic, you know, in terms of, like, anxiety of getting shot and, and dangers and things like that. I thought a stress vest is something you put on after you've had some bad food at a buffet or something, you know. No, yeah. <laughs> they also have, like, a, a taser knife, too, for knife training. You know, so if you get hit by the blade, then, then you get electrocuted. So... Yeah. Any, uh, any booth, Andy, you want us to stop by tomorrow? Um, the Tops one. I don't know how much you got at it, uh, but I definitely, even for my own purposes, to be able to see some of the uh, behind-the-scene like stuff you can't really talk about, just so I can see it because I can't be there. Yeah. Um, what else? I have a video of the prototype uh, Bob and the bo uh, prototype uh, Text Creek folder, so... <laughs> That'll be a sneak peek. It's not in production yet. And there, there's another another video that uh, is a new top knife coming out that is like a cross between a Tom Brown tracker. And it, I was impressed. It was a really cool looking knife. And uh, when you see it on video, uh, hopefully it'll it'll cross over to that because uh, when I put it in my hand, it just felt really good. It, they had a whole table that was probably, what, three by six long that was just full of all new knives in their tops lineup. Uh, I know that, like, the Tex Creek, the smaller version of the Tex Creek, they're doing with uh, not the Cerakote, but like a uh, Coyote Brown uh, Dur Duracote style coating on it, and they changed the scales on it. It's not like Rocky Mountain. Scales, but they're they're dimpled and stuff a little bit, so you have a good grip, and they're not like polished micarta. So when I had it in my hand, it just felt really good and grippy. And I know when your hand sweats, it's just going to get more tacky in there, where it's not going to come out. Especially if you're using it as like a skinner or gutting out a deer or whatever, it would work really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that so, sounds. Uh, Mora's got a new. Uh, knife, tell them the piggyback option on the new Morris. Yeah, um, I don't want to say like they revamped their whole lineup, but it looked, they a lot of their knives it looked like they renamed them, and they put different handles on them, but then they had one called uh, the rope that had like mini serrations going across it, and I have a video that's going to feature them, it's like 10 or 12 knives, but a, what a cool feature that they had was, you all know that a lot of those Morris come with the hard molded plastic sheaths, and this one had like a little uh, outcropping sticking out on it where you could take the other sheath and it was almost like a key where you could put it on there so you could piggyback another knife off that sheath. So they had a couple specialty knives for certain things and that would be really cool that if you had like their traditional Mora and then that specialty knife that's piggybacking off that one sheath. So that was... That was pretty cool, and it's in a price point that was around twenty bucks. I mean, yeah, it was it was really nice. Awesome. Uh, oh, one uh, company that I would like to see, uh, Safariland, if you could check out some of their holsters, because I, I think I'm pretty sure they have some new stuff out, and uh, looking at some stuff for uh, duty and tactical would be yep. pretty cool. Okay. The other uh, booth we stopped by Andy was uh, Lock Sack. So uh, they're big fans of yours. Uh, they had a pretty nice setup. So they've they've got uh, I know you do the review on them. But they've got like fish tanks there with iPads in the fish tank, and as you walk up, you see yourself on the iPad through the camera underwater. But yeah, I mean they had a good impressive line. I didn't see anything new from lock sack, but I mean this is what I build all my first aid kits in. So they're all built in lock sack bags, waterproof to what, 200 feet. Yeah. Um, but impressive booth, 
good stuff, quality stuff, and um, so it was good to see them. They said to tell you hi, Andy, and as soon as we mentioned your name, everybody went crazy at Locksack. Oh, they so. did. It was nuts. Yeah. The whole booth went nuts. Yeah. Awesome. Well, they're pretty cool, and in fact, in my backpack right now, I got like, because this backpack is not waterproof, I have all my stuff that's like electronic in a lock sack bag and then like wrapped around like a jacket or something like that. So, yeah. Jill, their marketing director, uh, raved about your video that you did where you put your rifle in the bag and then put it in the creek. So if folks are watching this and you haven't seen that video, like the lock sack video that Andy does in the rain and in the water, check that out. That was really cool. One of the improvements that they're going to do is because of viewers like you and comments in the videos let them know is that they're adding another closure on to the top of the bag. So I think at one time it had one mm -hmm. closure going across. Well, now they've revamped the line. It's a double uh, closure. This is that double. So they're saying that, I mean, I don't know. What, I have to look at their tech spec sheet to see what depth of water that would be waterproof to. But Jill, their marketing director, said that it's just an ungodly depth now that they're able to put that in without it. So, awesome. And if you have your smartphones or pads, you can still use it. It played sound perfect through the bag. It worked really good. Really good. Yep. You showed Andy the uh, picture of your first aid kit that you took down to the Amazon. Awesome. Uh, and I had a picture of that, and all the components were, were built out of a lock sack bag. So they liked that picture so much, they asked me to email it to them, and they want to use it in the booth as a demo. That's fun. Yeah, because, I mean, that stuff, because, you know, I didn't realize, you know, what a role humidity plays in a jungle environment to your equipment. I mean, the inside of my first aid kit looked perfect, and I had to ford through some pretty, like, nasty water uh, on the way out and uh, got home, took everything out. Uh, I believe the fabric was still a little bit damp, but everything on the inside that was, like, critical... Dry yeah. as a bone, so it was it was pretty awesome. I I swear by that stuff. Yeah. Well, they're but, really passionate. They're really passionate about their product, and she was just really excited about talking where they're going 2015. And I just can't reiterate enough how much they said that the general public just wanted that extra in, enclosure to seal it, and they listened to their customer. Mhm. Mm and I, I think that's really cool. And you know, I never really had too much of a problem with, you know, the single uh, seal that they had on there, but having the double one, that's pretty much bomb-proof. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to look at some of those. And uh, a note about me throwing my rifle into the creek. Uh, in the video, you can kind of see it start to go down the stream. Uh, that was not planned, and I actually had, like, a, a short panic attack before it got stopped. Um, so a little side note for that. <laughs> well, because it's a damn defense rifle, you know, a $1,600 rifle just floating down the river. You're like, oh, sh <laughs> did not think that one through. I should have tied a, uh, a string around it or something. The things we do for video production, Andy. Yes. Uh, Brew Daddy wants to know which booth has the best babes. I'm assuming that's females. I yeah I it re I don't think it you know there's good looking people everywhere but I mean there wasn't like over the top crazy Vegas like stripper show stuff going on I mean we were on point just hitting trying to hit booths and look our goal today in I mentioned this to Ken a couple times was you got all these YouTubers and people there just filming everything and trying to talk to everybody. My goal today was to try to find that unique item that a lot of people weren't talking about, that maybe it's a small upstart company, mom and pop, and it's their first show, and they had a really cool innovative item, like uh, the gentleman at uh, Battle Blades, really nice guy, you know, with putting the knives on the side of the AR. I mean, very innovative stuff. Those were the type of folks that I was looking to hit because I think that's what you folks want to see. Anybody can see somebody with a hundred different variants of an AR or whatever, but it's 
those unique individuals that are making really cool products that are coming out. That's the side that I was trying to convey. And uh, we're going to try again tomorrow and Thursday to see if we can find any unique individuals. Uh, there's a lot of uh, tactical dudes running around, you know, 250, 300 pounds on the hoof wearing 511 pants, you know, going crazy town. But, uh, you know, I, we're out there trying to find uh, those uh, fun, engaging individuals with unique, innovative products. And uh, I'll make videos of that and bring them to you. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And for people that aren't familiar with your channel, uh, what is your URL for your channel again? Mine? Yes. God, I can't remember. I just tell everybody go to YouTube, the search engine, Wingman115, bada boom, bada bing, right there. I'll answer it for you. It's youtube.com forward slash wingman115. There you go. <laughs> my wingman. He's my wingman. There you go. I'm your goose. Uh, hopefully I do not get ejected and hit by a piece of glass. Um, but anyway, um, any last parting words before we turn in for the night? Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, anybody wants us to see any products? You know, throw them in there. Uh, uh, looks like 50 Stitches Steel wants you to look at Emerson knives. Yeah. If you can find them. On your list for today, and then we got sidetracked. Yeah. So. Uh, when we see Emerson, we're we're gonna we're gonna go. We were looking at the Shot Show app that they have, and uh, the the place is so big, it's just hard to navigate through there because there's so many signs and you can't see things a long ways away and you get turned around. But uh, definitely, if we're by Emerson, uh, we're gonna stop and check them out. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll check out Emerson and see what they got new for 2015, and then we'll throw out probably some pictures on your on your page on the Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I'll snap some photos and put them up there. So if you're not a member of the uh, Wingman 115 or the Prepare One Facebook page, because Ken's updating stuff with medical and emergency preparedness stuff that he's seeing, uh, please go over and sign up so you can be uh, on uh, the inside information hotline here at Shot Show. Awesome. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, spending some time with me and all my subscribers after a very long and tiresome day at SHOT Show. Um, and I wish you luck for next uh, for tomorrow. Next tomorrow. Next day. Tomorrow. <laughs> it's been a long day for me, too. I want to take a moment to thank Ken for bringing me out, out here to Vegas. And uh, check out his website, uh, www.helpprepare.me. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff on there. Everybody needs a good first aid kit, emergency preparedness kit, and Ken has a lot of stuff on his website. So please go and check him, check him out. Uh, supporting channel sponsors like Ken helps us be able to do stuff that we love to do like this. So please check him out. Yes, and also because he's just super cool, and all of his stuff is honestly way cooler than anything you'll probably find in any store because he gets the harder to find stuff and uh, has it all consolidated. And also, uh, his Facebook has a lot of medical articles and how-tos um, and instructional stuff, so it's just even worth, uh, you know, being a fan of his Facebook page just for the knowledge alone. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, there's lots of YouTube channels, and there's only a couple, two or three that I choose to support and Wingman and, and the Interbox channel or two that um, I want to back and support as a sponsor. So uh, thanks again for having me. My first time on the live show and we'll uh, we'll see you around. All right. Thank you guys and catch you later. All right. Thanks.